Hey guys, it's Linda Winter and I have another Winter Designs project. I've already shown you my first eyeglass case. That's this guy, glasses case number one, and it has this nice curve on it and that allows you to get this nice little pucker here. So you can hold your glasses, use a snap, use Velcro, use snaps and snaps. I've used a magnetic snap there, but it's a fun one to do. It whips up really fast. The video that I did for you, I spent a lot of time talking about fusibles and talking about ironing out the vinyl wrinkles and things like that. We're not going to do any of that. All of that video, as long as it is, it whips up really fast, so don't be intimidated. I do want to mention one thing, though. When I talked about sewing this, this open end here, this open end here, I talked about leaving all of that open. And you know, as you make something a couple times, this is a brand new template, so it's the first time I've really got to work with it when I did that video. The more you use it, the more you think of things. Instead of leaving this whole area open, stitch here, and stitch here so you only have this area to turn. It'll turn just fine and what that gives you is a nicer finished edge, a nicer finished edge here so you don't have to fool with it. So that's a little tip on this guy. If I had lots and lots of time to play with all of these templates and make a thousand of them, then I'd have a thousand ideas for you and suggestions. Guess what? You guys are going to be doing that because you guys that really get into this stuff and that do them for crafts or for gifts or whatever it is to sell, you're going to be making a lot of these. And then you'll be able to tell me, Linda, this is a great idea. Linda, that's a great idea. And I'll try to post those for you. So glasses case number one, we've done that one. Go watch that if you haven't seen that already. We're going to do tonight glass case number two. This glass is case number two. It's straight. It's got this nice angle here. Instead of the curved pocket, I showed it in the first video. It's called silverware. So you can, again, if you're doing an anniversary, if you've got a special occasion and you want to set the table, Christmas, holidays, whatever it is, do your fabrics. And you can make this a really nice setting. I think backyard barbecue would be a whole lot of fun with that. But if I took the silverware out and I put my glasses in, you can see this case here will do a good job of holding it. You can make it shorter if you want to. I made it a little bit bigger because there are big glasses. Some of you have big glasses and I don't want this. If this was shorter, this glass might be sticking out a little bit and I don't want the chance of this getting scratched. So I made it a little bit taller. If you don't want it to be that tall, you can certainly, when you cut the template, and you'll see me do that, we can cut some of this down or we can cut down here too. So there's lots of ways to adjust all of this. Bigger glasses here, that will fit nicely. It'll work with smaller glasses too. So here's another pair of sunglasses, not quite as big, but you get the idea. They're still tucked inside of there. So I love the idea that I think they're safe and protected. Now I want to show you as well though how to do one that is for a book. Now with this I've got my reading glasses in here and I really would have like a pen or a highlighter if I were taking notes or whatever it is. You can have that inside of here as well. So you can adjust this however it is that you like. I've used a headband to mark the page where supposedly I left off but you can just put it around your book. So if you wanted to give somebody this as a gift after you've got a favorite book that you love, then you put this around and that's now a really nice gift. So you match the book with the fabric with the elastic. We'll talk about the headbands, we'll talk about elastics, we'll talk about the length, but guess what? This book is different than these books. I've grabbed a couple books. You know, I have cats, so my sister gave me this. I had bought it for myself too. I could pee on this. It's not gonna work for this. This is too small, that's too big. I guess I guess I can make a smaller version, but it's not gonna hold my glasses. Same thing with this. You can see that basically would take up, let's try it, that would take up the whole book. If I had my elastic a little bit shorter, Okay, can you see how that actually would work, but I need that elastic to be a whole lot smaller. So if you're gonna make something to fit, let's say it's a diary, not a book, then you've got that pen in here, you've got your reading glasses, you maybe even put a little pocket on the back side with some note paper or sticky notes or whatever. And if it's a diary or a calendar, then you make the elastic fit for the size you want. I've got a bigger book here, but if you look, this bigger book is almost the same height 
as this book here. So find your book, decide what kind of book you're typically going to be giving people or that you're going to be using this for and then we'll adjust accordingly. So I want to show you first how we're going to cut. And I talked about fusibles in the first video so we're not going to spend a lot of time with that. But I do want you to go back and watch if you're not familiar. I've got SF-101 and I've got SF-101. You can do SF-101 but you can also do the lightweight fusible fleece. This is a Pelon fleece that I have on my website. It's a fusible and then this is the SF-101. This will just make it a little bit softer and it can be the lining or it can be the outside, either one. So you decide what it is that you want. When we look at the one that I did here, if you notice, this goes with the opening kind of to the left side. Same thing over here, same thing with this one over here. You can determine whether you want it to go that way or whether you want it to open up in the opposite way. It's all based on how you lay your fabrics out. So I've got this as my fabric and this as my fabric. When I place this down and I cut this, we're going to see that this right here is going to have that cut. And what that's going to do is have that going this way. If I wanted to go the other way, then see what I'm doing? I'm flipping it over. Make sure you have everything lined up. I've got this as the bottom of my fusible. I've got the bottom of my fusible there. And when I place this on, I've given myself enough room. And again, I'm using the Martelli rotary cutter. You can use whatever cutter you like. Remember the no slip material on the back is making this so that I can turn as I cut. You're not going to want a paper template. You're not going to want the acrylic templates because this no slip grabs. That's the material on the back side. Whether it's gray or whether it's the tan that I have, either of those two, no slipping, no kidding. I like this gray material. That's the new stuff that I'm using. It just grabs and it doesn't get as dirty. If you're using the brown um, templates, the templates that have the brown on the back, I do have a cl uh, template cleaning kit that you can use as well. All right, so what do we want to do? We want to get our elastics in first. On the book that I did, I used one of these and I cut this piece right here. And again, I'm going to give you estimates, but you're really going to make one and then you're going to try it based on the book that you have and then you'll decide what works best for you. So I'm cutting off that excess right there. I used 11 inches before. It was a little bit tight, but you can see right here that I've got from here to here 13 inches. Why am I not giving you 13 and a half? Why am I not giving you an exact measurement? Because this is a headband. If you're using headbands, if you're using elastics, there's a bunch of different kinds and they all stretch differently. Here's a bin that I have of headbands. Do you see? That's, oh man, it's not going to work at all. Here's another one. Look at the stretch that's there. Here's another that just like that. So these also are really fat. So you try to find what it is that you have. Remember this one right here? Let me pull this out. Even though this is short, when I cut this, let's go look and see. Do you see what I've got? I've got plenty. Now this is wide. So what that means is when you have this here, this, this is going to be much wider going around. Okay, that's Fine, it's up to you. What we want is to have enough stretch for that. And the best thing to do when you're doing this is sew one side in and don't sew the other side inside. And then you can put it around your book and then you can stitch inside. Right up here, because there's only one piece of fabric or one set of fabrics down here, I've got several layers of fabrics. This is a great place for you to leave open if you want to adjust the headband. And we're going in about two inches from the edge. Do you see right there? that marking because that marking can be the center of this. It can be the center of this, but it's still, if I have the center of this, then it's gonna be further over. So use this based on the kind of elastic and you just figure out when you go to mark your fabrics where you want that elastic to be. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and place this inside. I've got my two layers here. I'm gonna use my mat and I'm gonna go in with this elastic two inches. So basically I'm gonna place this right along here. We're gonna stitch that down. So I'm just gonna lock that in. Straight pins or clips either way because we're just holding this down for a second and we'll stitch this down at the machine. Right along the edge, so seam allowance doesn't matter so much except just right along that edge. 
All right, so we've done that one side. I'm gonna go ahead and look at my elastic and I'm gonna make this 11 and a half inches. Do you see over here, I've got my 11 inches. So at my 11 and a half inches, I'm gonna go ahead and cut. So I'm lining it up over here and I'm doing 11 and a half inches just because I am gonna sew this in here and here. But again, if you didn't want to do that, we would stitch this down here, leave this part unsewn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip here and again, we're looking at our two inches. So I'm going to be looking from my blue to my blue and right about there as my two inches. I'm going to place a pin here. And then we're going to talk about this bump because we don't want that getting caught. It's not long enough really to get over there, but it might. So we're going to pin that down in just a minute. All right, so we have made our elastic so that it's not adjustable, it is set. But again, if you wanted to do your elastic and adjust it based on the book, for that particular book, we're basically gonna be stitching this area here, leaving that part unsewn. And then when we get the book and we get this almost ready, we can tuck it inside of there. Okay, hopefully that'll make sense to you. So I'm gonna pin this down. I don't wanna pull, see how that pulls a little bit? I don't wanna pull that. So all I wanna do, and I can make it looser rather than tighter, that doesn't matter so much. I'm gonna pin these layers. So that just holds down a little bit. I don't care if they're crooked or not because it's already sewn on there. So we're gonna put our right sides together. You honestly can leave your opening wherever it is you like. But if we look over here, this where they're joined, that is basically this area here and this area here. I don't wanna have it so that it's so close up here. So down here would be a really good spot to have that join. That area there where it's the opening part. All right, so you can clip or you can pin. I'm gonna go ahead and use some clips here. And I've got a purple dark piece of fabric here. So I would match my threads if I were really making this, but I don't have a bobbin that color and I'm not gonna take the time to go ahead and wind a bobbin that color. But I would recommend that you do that. Now I'm gonna go back and in a second, I'm gonna remove the clip where I have that opening. This isn't a big project, so it's not like I'm gonna forget what I'm doing, but right over here, this area there, that's where I wanna have that opening, so I'm just gonna put a pin in there. All right, so I'm gonna start here. We're gonna stitch all the way around. We've got the elastic right in here. We've got the elastic in there. And our little bookmarker eyeglass case is <laughs> kind of almost done. I mean, it will be after we sew this, almost. All right, so seam allowance, you can do quarter inch, you can do three eighths of an inch. The bigger seam allowance is gonna make this smaller. So if you're doing it for reading glasses, if we're doing it for reading glasses, let's see, right here, if we're doing this for reading glasses, then we can make this whole thing a little bit narrower. If you want it to be a little bit bigger, you could do that as well too. And again, if you have a needle down position, you know, then take advantage of that if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and just stitch a little bit further and then get my foot set up. We're gonna use pinking shears to trim this off the bulk, but where I'm leaving that opening, we're gonna stop. And I'll show you what I mean in just a minute when we get there. And honestly, this project is so small, you don't really even need the clips. This would be a great project to do out of flannel as well. And if you do it out of flannel, then you really don't even need to use those pins or clips because the flannel kind of likes it to stick to each other. All right, so I want to back stitch there and this right here and this right here, let me show you. This area here and that area here, those two, your seam allowance needs to be pretty consistent because that's where we're gonna be turning it. And we're gonna use the iron to help us a little bit. I've left a small opening on here and you can leave a little bit more than that if you want to. Basically, my opening is about two and a half inches. So if you're not so comfortable with turning, then three inches is fine too, totally up to you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clip those corners. Don't really need to because when I use the pinking shears, 
banking shears or scissors, whichever way. If you're doing scissors, then clip in the corners, that is a big deal. Don't clip so close that we're gonna lose those stitches that we put in here. There's where I started. So I'm just gonna snip that off a little bit not to get too close to that. Same thing down here. And all we're doing is getting rid of some of the bulk. Now, if you're doing the fusible fleece as one of those layers, you may want to, before you press it on, make it a quarter of an inch all around on each side, a little bit smaller, so that fusible wouldn't go all the way to the edge. That way it's not in the bulk of your seam. You guys that use the fusible fleece, you, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It just prevents some of that bulk. Um, I don't take the time typically to do that, but you guys know I'm a getter dunner, so I'm not making these to sell. I'm just making these to give to family and friends and to use for myself and to show you guys. So this is one of those things that just whips up really fast. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and flip this right sides out and you can see how tiny that is. So two and a half is what I have. You may want to do the three inches. I'm going to get that out of the way. And we're going to use scissors, pokers, whatever it is that you have, knitting needle, any of those things. There's that pin. So before I stab myself, we want to get that pin out of there. And I do want to make sure that all the corners, not just at the tops and the bottoms, but at that angle, that they're all nice and sharp. And I've used a white thread. The white thread is going to show a little bit and that kind of helps me out right now uh, to see if I've got my seams open. See that white right there? But honestly, I don't want to see that white thread. So if you are making a bunch of these, if you're going to do all purples, then get your purple thread, your bobbin thread, your top thread, all of that, and make one after another, after another, after another. So when you're doing assembly line, make sure to match your threads at the same time and cut those fabrics at the same time and stitch them up. I'm going to use my scissors that don't have a real sharp end, and I'm going to poke at the corner right in here that's where that angle is so i'm going to reach in there and i'm going to pull that out a little bit then we'll get in with the scissors knitting needle whatever it is that you have stiletto i'm trying to get philip to make that wooden stiletto that many of you have been asking about i showed it a while back he made a bunch he realized that it takes more time to make than it is worth for me to sell so he doesn't want to make them anymore, but I'm asking him for Christmas to make me some as one of my Christmas presents. So if that becomes a Christmas present for me, it'll become a Christmas present for you because it's a really cool pressing tool. Okay, so you can see I've turned everything right side out and I'm going to finagle a little bit. And having this purple and having this metallic-y kind of fabric really does help me see whether I've got this open or not. I'm going to pull a little bit at those as well. So before I press, I've got this nice and open. Because I'm going to be stitching this side, the left side and the right side together, I do want to have those lined up. The other project, the one that doesn't have the elastic, we're not going to be stitching on top of each other. Let me show you what I mean. Since I'm talking about it now, you can see there's no stitching on top here. So that one versus this one, do you see how this has a stitching there on top? And this one doesn't have any stitching. I like this look better, but we're gonna do it in a totally different way. So all that I'm doing right now, this pressing and all of that, it's gonna matter because I need to make sure that they line up right. All right, so I'm poking here. Now we're gonna press this out a little bit. Oh, and one of the things I wanted to do and I forgot to tell you guys to do, we'll maybe do it in the next one, but right here, before I had flipped this right side out, what I like to do is press that opening back. Let's see if I pull this tight and see. You can see how it's, if I pull tight, it kind of closes automatically. Sometimes it works that way. See on the purple on the back, how it didn't work that way, but that on the front did. So I'm gonna give that a press with my fingers and press a little bit here. A lot of times you'll fight with that and that's where your project doesn't look so good. So when you're doing the wrong sides out, so you have right sides together and you're doing the wrong sides out, before you turn it at that opening area, you can press that fabric backwards. I've shown it in some of the other videos. Hopefully it'll make sense to you what I'm talking about. I think you all have probably done that before as well.
All right, so we want to give this a good press. We're looking at our corners. We're looking at that opening area and making sure that everything is good. Some elastics will melt if you have an iron, so just be careful around your elastics. You can buy elastic by the yard. You can buy elastic headbands like I've done. There's lots of different ways that you can do this if you like. So totally up to you. All right, so when we've got this folded this way, you can see now this cut, that angle, is on my right-hand side where before it was on the left-hand side. Does that make a difference to you? Then if it does, pay attention to how you lay your fabric out before you cut with the template, whether this is the fabric that's up or this is the fabric that's up. Look how pretty this is. If I bring that elastic to the back side, I mean, is that a nice look or what? You know, if you've got a nice linen and you want kind of that, you know, more simplistic, calm kind of a demeanor, look how pretty that is. And then you've got that peaking inside. And because the elastic is here versus the elastic is here, there's not really a right or wrong to this. So you can play with this and see what it is. Now, if your elastic does have a right side or a wrong side to it, you know, then it will make a difference. All right, so what do we want to do? We want to top stitch. We've got a couple options. I need to stitch this and I need to stitch this. I don't have to stitch anywhere around here. I just need to stitch this and I just need to stitch this. So you decide if you want to top stitch, top stitch, top stitch, top stitch, and then when you get basically to this area, you can use a marking pen and then mark. So you decide how it is you want to top stitch. I didn't top stitch here. I did top stitch all the way around here, and it's really edge stitching more than anything else. And then you can decide if you want to have for the pen. The pen, pencil, marker, highlighter, whatever, is really based on your glasses, on whether they will fit. These glasses, you can see how high up they sit. I've got a lot of glasses that are really flat. These are a pair of reading glasses. So when these go in here, I mean, that high up part is gonna stick really up if I create a pocket for this. So get your glasses out before you do the stitching here and decide whether you wanna add that pocket or not. I'm not gonna add the pocket for my pen. The other thing you can do too is forget the glasses. And if you've got a book where, again, it's a diary, it's a journal, it's a calendar, you may just stuff this with all your writing utensils with little sticky notes, little sticky note pads. I love putting sticky notes on you know, all the different things that I'm flipping through and, and looking at when I'm reading, so totally up to you. So we would stitch here and we would stitch here down. I'm not going to stitch that down because I think you guys get the idea of how to finish that off. I want to go on and show you how to do the glasses case without the elastic next. So again, you decide if you want to do the top stitching, but we would stitch down and stitch down to close that, and that's going to give me this style right here. And you can see with the elastic what that's gonna give me. This is the style that we're gonna do next. It's just a plain old reading glasses, but what's different about it is this has a finished edge. This has the two edges that we've joined together. And that's why I took my time to make sure that these were lined up right, that those corners would be poked out nice. I'm not worrying about that on this method here. It gives me that finished stitch. So I wanna show you how to do that next. All right, so I showed you how to do the eyeglass case with the elastic, with a bookmarker kind of a concept, but I wanna show you how to do just the glasses case, this guy here. So we're gonna do the same thing, basically. I have two pieces of fabric with the fusible. I've got kitty cats here, and do you see how I've got the kitty cats upside down? I need to make sure that I'm going this way. And again, based on whether you want the fold to go this way or you want it to go in the opposite direction would determine whether I go this way or whether I go this way. Whatever I do, I wanna make sure that my direction, if I'm using a directional fabric like I am here, that that is where this part is here. So I'm gonna place this here. I've got my two fabrics, even enough, where that fusible is on the back side. SF-101 is what I'm using. Notice I've got a plaid here. If I did a stripe, I definitely would want to match that up. And I think I will flip this over 
and I will try to line up, you know, when fabrics print like this with a plaid, with a stripe, it doesn't mean they're going to be consistent. It just means that right here, it's consistent. So I'm gonna try to line up and we'll see, and I can see already that it's not. So there's really not a point on me doing this, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that anyway. But take into consideration your directional fabrics, if you've got stripes, if you've got plaids, if you've got any of those things that you wanna make sure that you're lining up the template just so, so that we're not gonna have any surprises. And those aren't pleasant surprises. All right, so we're gonna grab our clips. We're gonna clip, clip, clip. And there is no worry here about the elastic. So we don't have that issue here. What we do wanna do though, is we are gonna stitch around. We're gonna do this a little bit differently in the way that we finish this off. All right, so you can see how I've got clips on the side. I don't have any clips at the bottom, this area here. We're gonna leave that open. And again, the seam allowance that you use is totally up to you um, as to whether you want it for bigger glasses or smaller glasses. If you've got bigger glasses, narrower seam allowance. If you've got smaller glasses, then a wider seam allowance. And honestly, it's not gonna be that much of a difference unless you want it to fit perfectly. Everybody tends to have different styles of glasses, but if you have one style that is kind of out of the norm or one style that you always use, then that seam allowance will make a difference. Now, what we're gonna do is go ahead and trim those corners. You can use the pinking shears if you want to, but for sure, we wanna trim off the bulk here, the bulk here, the bulk especially here, but don't get so close that you're snipping that corner. Bottom, bottom, we're gonna leave here. And I don't know if you noticed, I didn't backstitch here, I didn't backstitch here. We are gonna backstitch because that is where we're gonna be turning and we're gonna be doing some work. So I am gonna backstitch there. Sometimes you can get away without backstitching, sometimes not so much, and this is one of those projects where backstitching will make a difference. All right, so I've trimmed my corners. I wanna go ahead and we can either trim like this or we can use pinking shears. I do wanna have a smaller seam allowance because we're gonna do basically a French fold. If you haven't done a French fold before, then what that allows you to do is get a nice finished inside without those seams, but it just gives you a, you know, a nicer look. Our bottom is gonna have a raw edge seam, and I'll show you why. You can finish it off a different way at the bottom. You can use a serger, you can use binding tape, but I'm gonna be using just a straight stitch and a zigzag. If I really did this, then I would be using my serger. If you don't have a serger, you can use your zigzag on there. If you're making these and you're selling them, when we get to that point, I'll talk about the binding and you'll see what it is I'm doing. Kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but since I'm taking the time for just a minute to do this pinking, and if you don't have pinking shears, then scissors work just fine. I just need to trim off the bulk because we're gonna reach inside and we're gonna do a little magic trick here. All right, so I've got this right here. That part right there, we're gonna bring in and what we want to do is at the bottom, I want to get my seams where they're lined up, where they're even. Okay, see how that's even? And what I'm going to do with that pointed part right there, that angled part, I'm just going to feel as I'm pressing down and I'm going to tuck inside. Can you see how I'm going inside here and I want to come back to here. If you want to clip and clip just to hold that in place, we're just going to be doing this with our fingers right now. And what I wanna do is go inside of here. I can feel whether the seam here is lined up with the seam there. So I'm just gonna feel and press. And now I'm gonna continue to go up inside of here. And I'm gonna continue to go, and do you see how I'm putting my finger inside of here? And I'm just gonna fold this over and I'm basically making the eyeglass case. We're gonna get rid of that clip. I don't need it anymore. Get rid of that clip. And I wanna show you what it is that I've done. All right, so inside of here, I've got those seams still lined up. 
that angled part, that's now inside of here. So I just pushed my way up. This angle is right inside of here. I'm gonna open that up and show you again just so you can see. So it came like this. All right, I'm gonna take this where that angle is and where the other seam is, and I'm gonna line those two seams together, these two down here. And if you wanna clip and clip, you don't have to, but it kinda of helps just to get this going. And on the shorter side, this side right here that's shorter, that side right there that's shorter, I'm gonna be pushing that inside. And I'm lining those two edges here and here. I can feel if they're aligned on top of each other. And that part that's pointed, that angle, I'm just going inside of there. And as I go inside, right now it's kind of a bulk and a mess, but what I'm gonna do is just keep tucking my finger in and pushing up. I'm pushing this, that's that angled part, and I'm pushing that up. And you can see as I push it up, it just all kind of falls right into place. It's one of those cool little tricks of giving me, so far, not yet, but a nice finished seam in just a minute. All right, so I got rid of my clips. I can feel inside of here, feel inside of here. I've got right here the raw edge seam. That's the pink seam there. I've got my pink seam here. And if you want to use scissors the first time around, then you're going to feel it flat. The pink is bulked up a little bit. So if you want to do scissors and just cut that straight, that's probably going to be easier for your first time around. Look to see that these are lined up too, and look to see that this is laying flat. So what we want to do now is we're going to stitch this whole side down. When I stitch this down, if you've done a French seam before, then you know where we're going. But if you don't know a French seam, when I stitch this inside, this raw edge here is going to be inside my seam allowance. Now my seam allowance needs to be a little bit wider than what I was using before because we've got to trap that inside. So all of this here, I can feel that here. If you need to pin, if you need to clip, then go ahead and do that. I'm just pressing all of that out a little bit, and I'm gonna be stitching from the end where we're gonna be turning it, right side out, all the way up to the top. So I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine. If you wanna use your foot and move that needle position, then you go right ahead and do that. I'm gonna move my needle over a little bit, and as I stitch, I'm going to back stitch a little bit. Now, when I get to where all of this fabric is gone, this straight edge here, there's not all that bulk. So your fabric may tend to shift on you a little bit. Don't let that move. We want to keep that seam allowance where it was. All right. You can trim that out, but right now what I want to do is just show you what it is that we've done. We're going to be going lining sides. Okay, this is the outside. This is the lining side right here. We're going to go lining side. And do you see this right here? Let's go back to this. Do you see that right there? I don't have any bulk, but over here I do. So we're going to trim that out for now. And all I did was just cut that off. We'll come back later on and trim that if you want to, but I want to show you what's happened. So lining side out. And again, I've done two layers of SF-101. You can do one layer of SF-101 if you want. I've got kind of a lot of bulk here. This um, black and white plaid that I have isn't a cotton fabric. It's kind of a home deck fabric. So I really didn't need an SF-101 on there. If you're using a home deck fabric, you can do one layer of that SF-101. Okay, can you see how I'm starting to pop out? This is that outside fabric. So what I wanna do is keep going here. And I'm gonna look to see, do I have any stitches, any fabric, anything sewn, shown here? Or do I have anything shown over here? And I don't have anything shown over here. So if you wanted to, right there, that's where we sewed, you could go trim that excess off. I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how we're gonna make this look nice. All right, so we've got that angle that I need to push out. So I'm gonna use my scissors again. You can use your finger first to help, but can you see how I'm kind of just wiggling back and forth, back and forth? There's that angle there. 
And trimming off that bulk, again, is going to make a big difference in how sharp that will look. Same thing over here. I need to bring my scissors kind of over to this area. And I'm just going to wiggle back and forth. And I like to put the scissors in my belly <laughs> and just push a little bit and wiggle back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to flip it over because it's a little bit easier to see with the lining side. But you see what I'm doing there? All right. So we've got those angled parts good. Now what I want to do is just make sure everything else is lining up good. So right here, that's this part that I have right here, and that is this part here. So what I want to do is just make sure that all of this is pulled out. We have trimmed this, so we don't have any excess bulk there. It's the seam right over here that we have the bulk. All right, I'm going to give this a little bit of a press here, but I'm just going to finagle it first, back and forth. And we're going to press, and I love this little iron for projects like this because I can really get inside. Do you see how I'm getting into that? And I'm going to flip over to the other side and get into there. And right down here, I want to make sure that that corner, where it's joined together, that that is popped out too. I don't know if you could tell, but that I just pulled out, and that corner now is going to lay a little bit flatter. So those little details that somebody that you give this to won't know about, but you know about. So having that done. All right, so what have we done? We have created a little tube. I can fill the bulk here, so trim that seam out. So that excess that's there, I just wanted you to see how quick and easy it is to be done with this. We're going to press here. We're going to press all of this. And I want to make sure that what I get at the bottom tube and the outside tube that I have is nice and consistent because we're going to be using a stitch right down here. You can do your serger. You can do your sewing machine. And again, that bulk that's there can you see how that bulk is creating a little bit of a pucker? So you do want to get that bulk out of there. I'm just going to kind of finagle it a little bit there. The things I do to sacrifice time sometimes come back and bite me. So don't sacrifice the, or don't not sacrifice the time. Take the time to trim that up. All right, so what have we done? We've created our tube with the lining. We're going to stitch here. So we're going to have the sewing machine stitch here. And then you can do a zigzag. You can do a surge. You can do whatever it is that you want to finish that off. I'm just going to stitch here at the machine with a straight stitch. And this is where, if you wanted to change the height, remember earlier when I talked about on this guy here, you know, your glasses are much further down. I like it to be taller because I like those glasses not popping out. But if you wanted it to be shorter so you could see whatever it is, then this is where your seam allowance of the sewing machine can be a little bit wider. I'm right along that edge, and I don't have but maybe 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you could, if you wanted it to be shorter, you could change that seam allowance. I've sewn one side. I've flipped it over. I'm going to sew back on the other edge. Finish that edge off. Again, do as I say, not as I do. You do a nice finish, whatever it is. I'm just going to use my pinking shears, and I've got a lot of bulk here. And I don't recommend this because those pinking shears, if I squeeze a little bit and it moves on me, I'm going to lose my stitches. This is my lining. This, this finished edge that I have here, my finish is a pinking shear. Your finish, zigzag, satin stitch, serger, whatever it is that you want. And you can see all that bulk that's right there at the very edge. I've got a couple stitches left. We're going to turn this right sides out, and we're going to be done. So this method is even faster than what I just showed you. What this doesn't give me is the elastic for the bookmark, but you decide, do I want a glasses case? All right, here we are. We're going to turn right sides out. Do I want a glasses case, or do I want one that goes over a book? So you can decide. I'm going to make something similar to this, a little bit larger, to hold your cell phone, and it will be a crossbody bag. And it's going to be a very simple, simple crossbody bag. 
I've got a lot of bulk, again, home deck fabric with SF-101 and the cotton fabric, the cottons are the, um, the cotton fabric is the kitties with an SF-101. So I'm using my pinking shears to push a little bit. And as I push through, I'm not worrying about the fabric getting poked through. If I use something like this, I might poke through. When I get a little bit closer, I'm just gonna use my fingers. You would take the time to push this out, to give it a good press, to make it look nice. You get the idea. And we've got an eyeglass case in just a minute. I think the turning that I'm doing right here takes as long as the stitching up almost. So as we stitch this out or as we push this out, that's gonna give me a finished corner. And I am gonna use this, these guys to poke that out a little bit. And just take the time because there's a lot of bulk. That's again, where I didn't trim out that excess. So trim out that excess, so that's gonna lay nicer and flatter. You'll see this corner's gonna look a whole lot nicer because it didn't have all that bulk. But take the time. If you've seen those videos where you use the tweezers or you use the needle to pull out those corners and you've had success with that, terrific. There are lots of ways to get a pretty finished corner. Trim out the bulk. If you trim out that bulk, you're not gonna get that corner that I have there, but you get the idea. I'm gonna press this a little bit. We're gonna stick a pair of glasses in. And this, I don't see all my kitties, but I got a lot of my kitties here. So we're gonna put those in, and now I've got a glasses case. So we've got a glasses case, we've got a glasses case with the elastic, we've got a glasses case. Glasses case number one, that came from this template. Glasses case number two, that came from this template. Let me show you what I did with this one though. This is the one I made in the video the other day and I filled it with little goodies that a little girl might like. So you could put a $5 bill hidden in there. There's a, a mirror, there are some hair things. This is a nail clipper for the mermaid that's in every little girl. You could add a crossbody on top of this. You can even add a little latch fabric over here and then one of the um, um, hardware accessories that you wanna have and that could even be dangling from a backpack or something. So my two templates for glasses, my glass case one, glasses case one, glasses case two, those are your two options. And there are a bunch of different things that you can do with them as well. Head over to my website, winterdesigns.com. When you go to products and templates, click on that. And again, on your laptop, you're gonna see up at the very top, a search bar. If you're on a, a cell phone, if you're on um, an iPad, you're gonna look for the three little dots that are at the bottom of the dropdown. Type in glasses and you'll see these two templates that will pop up for you. And we have glasses case style one, glasses case style two. I've got some more things I'm gonna be showing you with these templates and some that are related to this, but I think they're gonna be really fun, really easy, really fast. And you can find all my information in the right up below. You'll also see it on the screen next as well. If you have any questions about anything, give me a call. Phone calls are always better than emails. My emails, for whatever reason, show up in spam sometimes, and sometimes it's three or four days later and you think I've totally ignored you. So my phone number, 850-449-0259. It'll be on the screen too. So write that down and you'll see it in the write-ups that I have on all the videos, most of the videos down below. So you'll see my phone number. If you have any questions, give me a call. I always have discount codes, so search through some of my other videos in the write-ups and look for them. And if you do Facebook, Facebook is where I post about my giveaways, where I post about my sales. It's where I post about the discount codes. And um, it's also where I have new videos that are updated too, besides YouTube. So thanks for watching. Go check out my 200 plus videos on some of my other templates that I have as well. And I've got a bunch of new stuff. So check out that video on my new products and templates too. Thanks for watching. I hope you found some good things that you've just got to go home and make.